Hey everyone and welcome back. I want to show you a quick mini laser upgrade that I recently did and honestly I should have done this a while ago. The tail stock is coming out of alignment with the center line of the spindle and to be fair that can happen on pretty much any lathe. The issue that I've always had and to be fair this is an issue on most mini lathes is recentering it is not an easy job. Most lathes have a screw that you can adjust to pull it back into alignment, but that's not the case on a mini lathe. These mini lathes don't have any fine adjustment screws, and the locking bolt is located on the bottom of the tailstock, and that makes the process of properly aligning it a pretty difficult thing to do. However, fixing all of this wasn't all that difficult to do. So the first thing I did was cut off a piece of steel that's slightly wider than the tailstock. The piece of steel I'm using here is a bit overkill, but it was the only piece of metal that I could find on hand that was big enough. With the piece of metal now down to its final size, I'll put it back in the vise and I'll drill and counterbore two holes so I can actually bolt the metal onto the tailstock. With the holes now drilled, I'll disassemble the tailstock and I'll mount the base in the vise. And I'll drill two holes and tap them for M6. I've put the tailstock back together and the issue I now have is that I can't push the tailstock over far enough to actually center the tailstock. The fix for this is pretty simple, all I have to do is remove a bit of material on the back of that piece of metal. I've swapped out my regular insert that I use for fly cutting for a DCMT boring bar. I've done this just so I can get a bit more of a crisp corner that I couldn't achieve with that round insert. And you know what? I wasn't expecting all that much for the fly cutter, but that is a really nice finish. And with that done, I can now center it properly. In hindsight, if I'd taken a bit more care and actually taken off a little bit less, I could have used the back of the steel to actually center it like a bit of a backstop. But if I really want to center it, I'd rather just use a dial indicator and center it properly rather than relying on a hard stop. The next thing I need to do is drill the hole for the captive adjustment screw and the captive adjustment thread. And I'm going to do that all as one assembly. Now in doing this I actually made a bit of a mistake and you'll see that in a bit. The mistake that I'm making is that I'm drilling it a little bit too low but I didn't know that until I actually took the tailstock apart.
and that is the mistake that I was talking about. I forgot about the way that the tail stock is actually shaped, and as a result, I was drilling a little bit too low. Thankfully, the fix for it was pretty simple. I made a brass insert off camera, and I filed it down. The screw won't get too much use, so making it from brass should be fine. I made the insert a little bit oversized, and then I just hammered it in place. The friction fit should be enough to keep it in place, but if it ever moves, I can always pin it in place. The final thing that I'll make is the captive screw, and I'll just make it from some cold rolled mild steel. I'll cut the threads into it using a die, and then I'll cut a slit into it so I can adjust it with a slotted screwdriver. On the piece of steel, I'm going to drill and tap an M4 hole, since I'm going to use a cap head screw to make the adjustment screw captive. And the last thing I'll do is I'll drill another hole for another grub screw to help lock the tail stock in place. And with that done, it's time to assemble it. The adjustment screw gets placed into the hole and the M4 screw will make it captive. Then the upper half of the tail stock is screwed in. The new locking screw will also get screwed in. And the rest of the tail stock will get reassembled however the tail stock came apart. The only difference here is that I'm not going to be using the bottom locking screw, at least for the moment. The way that it works now is, in theory, the two screws at the back will provide enough force to keep the tail stock in alignment. Speaking of which, adjusting it is also really easy. What I'll do is I'll take a slotted screwdriver and I'll use it to bring the tailstock into alignment. I'll then use those two screws to lock the tailstock in place. Now if you really wanted the tailstock to be in perfect alignment with the spindle, you'd want to use a dial indicator or the shim stock method, but either way it's going to be a lot easier with a fine adjustment screw than however I was doing it before. And the fine adjustment screw will also make taper turning a lot easier to dial in if I want to do it using the tailstock offset method. Finally, if you really want, you can lock the top and the bottom halves together using that bolt that I talked about on the bottom side of the tailstock. However, in my experience, I haven't seen any movement in the tailstock using those two grub screws to hold it in place. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this upgrade. Honestly, it's something that I should have done a long time ago, considering that having a properly tuned in tail stock is pretty essential, and this was a pretty simple upgrade to do with minimal materials. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.